Hi, I'm Griffin Perry. I'm Dawson Demir. I'm David Calvin. I'm Jack Moore, and we're from Korean Bowl. Canariboditis elegans, or C. elegans, have become a very useful tool for RNAi interference research. The organisms are simple, have a short lifespan, and have a similar genome to humans, making them an obviously good candidate to test the technology. RNAi is a biological process in which RNA molecules inhibit gene expression or translation initiated by double-stranded RNA, or dsRNA. The technology is similar to a cell cop. It is intended to stop harmful proteins from being produced. The C. elegans RNAi lab is intended to demonstrate the RNAi process and allow the observance of the phenotypes of C. elegans after consuming various bacteria containing double-stranded RNA that triggers the RNAi system and stops the production of certain proteins. C. elegans are microscopic worms that naturally live underground. They feed on bacteria, making them easy to take care of. Their movement is very snake-like and their typical life cycle is three to four days. The worms have ovular ends with a smooth body. They are hermaphroditic, which means many of the worms are females and they can reproduce with themselves. After the worms ate the dsRNA containing bacteria, RNAi was triggered and various genes were silenced. Three phenotypes were observed. Here are the C. elegans affected by the unc bacteria. These worms started to violently shake and twitch. This phenotype began to show up around stage L4 to when they are adults. It is likely that this gene is a regulator of muscle contraction and relaxation. Here is the plate of worms affected by the dumpy gene. As you can see, these worms are short and fat. The change in phenotype starts showing up around the adult stage of the worms. We hypothesize that the dumpy gene controls growth and development in the C. elegans because when it was silenced, the worms did not display signs of normal adult worms. Finally, here are the C. elegans affected by the blister gene. These worms had a phenotype of large blister on them. This worm, for example, has a blister on its tail. The blister gene disrupts the structure of the adult stage outer layer, causing the formation of blisters. This experiment offered a new and interesting way to visualize RNAi. We thought that this experiment was fun because we were able to utilize new tools and equipment that we hadn't used in the past. From this lab, the four of us personally gained both new skills and useful knowledge. We gained the skills of turning off genes, transferring specimens from one petri plate to another, and viewing those specimens under a microscope. The useful knowledge that we acquired in this investigation includes how RNAi worked as a whole, the steps and materials required in order to complete the task of silencing a gene, and how to apply parafilm to a petri plate.